Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I want to talk about what I think is probably one of the best audio compressors out on the market, at least for software-wise, and that is TDR Kotelnikov. Now, this is a audio compressor made by Tokyo Dawn Labs uh, for Tokyo Dawn Records, hence TDR. <laughs> I think it's probably one of the best ones in the market featuring a soft knee compressor and many more great fe uh, features that I think a lot of folks would really, really like. And the best part about it is there is a free version and a paid version. So if you're interested in this compressor, which I think you should be, you do want to watch this video. But before we get started, check out this awesome product from A Shampoo. A Shampoo Backup Pro 14 backs up your data and operating system automatically to all common storage types and cloud services. Always up to date backups take the fear out of hardware failure, OS issues, or malware infections. Don't miss my demo and review of Backup Pro 14. Plus, learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below. Okay, everybody. Well, I have Kotel Nakav opened up here, and I have both the free version and the gentleman's edition. Now, the gentleman's edition is the paid version, and I want to go over some of the features to start with that are the difference between the two. That way, to help you decide if you can use the free version or you may want to up for the paid version. Okay. Now here at the top for our quality levels, we go to precise, we have eco and precise. And on the gentleman's edition, we have eco, precise, live, and insane. And you see live down at the bottom, which is the very low latency mode. And if you're wondering what the difference between the two, we can easily just click on the question mark here and highlight it. Eco mode is an economic mode with an internal bandwidth of 100 kilohertz. Precise is the default quality and the one I normally use internal bandwidth 200 kilohertz insane is a very high uh, quality internal bandwidth of 400 kilohertz and the live is the low latency mode uh for mainly for real-time use internal bandwidth 200 kilohertz now the live you'll probably want to use if you're live streaming for example or if you're trying to process something at a local gig and you want to process everything through your computer now the free version looks like it has the eco mode only and you have to have eco mode also on the paid version now if you have the uh you know the free version you can actually use the eco mode for live streaming not a big problem it just gives you even more low latency mode for the live you know in case you want if you get the paid version now that's the difference in the, the quality modes for the most part i just use precise and Let's go into the other features here. Now, over here at the side, we notice we have a knob on the soft knee. And over here on the pay version, we don't. And we probably wonder why. We have this other button right below it says GR limit. This is your gain reduction limit. And let me play a clip back and you'll hear what this does. Okay, looking at the meter right here, we see we're peaking down to like 6 point, negative 6.5 dBs. And we're hitting about average about you know negative four to negative five dbs but maybe you're, you don't want your compressor to compress down that much let me turn on gain reduction limit here and notice to have it set to negative two db and now it's actually preventing it uh, the compression compressing down any more than that okay i said that may be a feature you may actually may need for the paid version okay now we actually have go down here at the bottom we have uh the stereo sensitivity now what this really does is really helps for example uh if you have stereo and you have lots of you know sound and stuff going out one channel more than you do the other channel you know like between left and right and what this does is it, it wants to help you focus on what you're getting more in the center and you can actually reduce this the amount of compression going out to those side channels that give you more wider sound in stereo so that way if you want to say only apply 80 percent you know compression to those far outside channels to give them more of a you know airy sound you can do that okay now we also here at the top before i forget we have internal side chain external side chain on the uh, you know the paid version on the free version we do not 
however you notice that it is you know dark grayed out <laughs> because i don't have side chain here on uh resolve studio which is what i'm using for my digital audio workstation using uh, fairlight okay now we also have yin and yang yin and yang adds even order harmonics to our audio the yin is more for the bass and the yang is more for the mids a little bit higher okay now we have inertia and what inertia does is it works with the release and stuff and the attack of your uh, signals how they're approached for example if you have uh, say 60 milliseconds on the release here with the normal inertia clicked in enabled what happens is it would auto slowly drop off then get very fast it will stay within the 60 milliseconds it's just it kind of starts off a little bit slower then gets much faster however if you press the alt button and click it you get a negative inertia and what happens here is when the uh, release comes off it starts off very fast but before it gets to the bottom it slows down you know pretty much like most people do at a you know red light start off really fast then slowly slow down when they get to the next one and it, like i said it will stay within the 60 milliseconds read more on the manual about this because it goes into more detail than i want to give in this video okay now here is a uh, feature in the uh paid version that i think a lot of people would want to use and that is frequency dependent ratio if we click on that that enables it actually view the frequency dependent ratio we click on edit okay now what this does for example if we want to control have for example we want to have a cleaner sound for for example our our audio is sounding like it's too compressed on the highs so we can go over here say let's choose a shelf of a here and let's increase this let's decrease it here say 50 percent i just do it for 100 for example and we choose shelf b is a little bit different as you can see about around 100 uh frequency range around 2.5 kilohertz and everything above the automatic compression is reduced reduced currently at 100 percent so you have no compression on everything say around 10k here now your compression is around starting at around 2.5k all the way to the lower end this can really help if say the highs are getting compressed too much and get kind of muddied up so you may want to say if you're running like a two to one compression you may want to drop it down say say like negative 50 percent that only give you something like a one and a half to one uh compression on those higher ends and like i said you got shelves you got bells you know you got curves you know you can change it to any way you want to and adjust it you move it around this is a nice feature i think a lot of people will probably actually want to use and because it really helps you know fine tune your compression instead of it being a full wide band compression on everything okay so yeah, that's the main features you'll notice. Uh, the only other one is the equal loudness uh, over here. Let me play some music and stuff here right quick. Okay, and if we notice over here, we got the little green light. And you notice it's blinking because it's uh, analyzing the uh, audio and stuff. And we see it turn blue. And when it tells you it's blue, it's still letting you know that the audio coming in and the audio coming out the levels match now for example if i pull this down here does it say zero it's already turned green and that's let me know that it's ready if you wish to be able to adjust those if we hit the trim button it tells you what it's currently at if i hit the trim button right quick it adjusted up to 3.5 db let you know the was about the same now the audio will change obviously but the blue lets you know that they are matching and green just lets you know it's ready however there's nothing to stop you from just go ahead and adjust it up say 6 db and just leaving it okay now that's the difference between the paid version here and the free version for the most part most of the features and stuff 
uh the free version if you ask me is definitely the way to go at least start out until you decide you need more then you can go to the paid version i went ahead and got the paid version simply because i thought it was such a great product at such a low price and i just really wanted to support the you know the people putting out such great plugins and stuff at a reasonable price this is to me one of the best plugins out on the market all right let's go ahead and just close the free version out here and let's talk a little bit more about in depth about everything here okay now i'm going to actually going to start uh playing some music here again and i'm going to actually bring in another uh, plug-in okay now this is tdr nova i will be having a video come out on it before too long Now, the reason I brought this out is because I wanted to use it as a good example to, and help demonstrate what's going on with this low frequency relax. And what this is, it's basically it's side chain to let your computer know, the plugin know itself, what signals to ignore. Now, the reason you may want that is because, for example, I got this one currently set at 500 hertz. And if we go here on the screen, got a lot of bass and stuff down here in this area that could be triggering the compressor maybe you don't want that area to trigger the compressor okay like i said you may not want that area to trigger the compressor now i am actually going to reduce this let's say down to 80 80 hertz would be a good place to start. And we might notice that sound like it's compressing down the top end a little too much. And that's because the bass end is actually triggering the compressor more than we actually want. Let me see if I pull that back on up. Get a lot more clarity and stuff because the high end is also less compressed. Okay, so I think this just helps, you know, tell the compressor what part to ignore. At least the bass and stuff. And the reason that might want that is because you could edit it out and say an EQ. But you still may be getting too much more bass that's triggering the compressor. This right here won't remove that frequency. It'll just ignore it. So I think that's a really good feature to have okay now i want to talk about the soft knee here and let me go down to the compression i actually use okay soft decompression is essentially if i look on the graph i'm going to put on the screen here we'll notice that normal graph with no, shown with no compression then the next one i got here is slight compression something you'd probably see probably at one and a half to two to one compression then we have a much higher compression one that I'm showing here, for example. Now, these are just examples I draw it up just to kind of illustrate what's going on. Okay, well now on this graph, you get the same amount of compression, but for really soft knee. And what this does is it helps the transition, you know, before and after. Now, if I overlay it here onto this other graph, as you can see, this, this will cause the compressors to start earlier and finish later. So it will reach down a little bit lower, but the whole purpose is, is to make that compression, even on a very high level compression, very transparent, which is something I think really adds, um, it keeps the audio more natural sounding, which is a, one reason I really, really highly recommend this audio compressor. Okay, now, we have uh, another button here called peak crest. And if we change it to one direction, we see it goes over to completely re release peak. And we go back the other direction, release RMS. Now let me pull up another graph here, which is also in the manual in case you want to read up more on this. And it shows the difference between the two. The peak uh, crest here, let me adjust this. This kind of help blends these two in together how much you want to uh, focus on that one or how much you want to focus on the rms now with the peak release here you can adjust it to where you want it 
and basically it's going to look at the peaks of the uh, waveform and when it wants to drop off whereas the rms is going to look at the more long-term value of them to me the rms is probably the better best to go for example vocals whereas the peak is the better uh, way to go for example drums like i said you can adjust these and blend them either which way you want to or just use one or the other like I said, for vocals i'm using just the rms of course, got a normal attack, got a normal uh, threshold you normally see, and we got a normal ratio. Okay, but now I want to talk about the makeup and dry mix over here. Now, a lot of people are going to see the makeup gain and automatically think to adjust it over, say, the output gain here. And I really hated that they made the output gain the smaller button on this version because I really think the um, makeup should have been a small button as well. And the reason that is because a lot of people can go to the makeup game thinking it's the one to go to and it's really not. The makeup actually works with the drive mix because Kotelnikov is a parallel, you know, dynamic compressor. And that means you basically have a wet and dry mix over here. Now you can adjust and bring these up. And let me play this audio here. Individual release control for peak and RMS content. An intuitive and maybe you want to mix bring this up a little bit this is this to kind of bring up and compensate for the amount of compression that you're getting such as equal loudness control and frequency dependent that way it helps you mix the way you things you want to make things so you sound more natural or to your own personal taste now like i said the output gain is the one you should be using for the overall signal going out and this is just so you can mix the two together Okay, everyone. So, yeah, there's a lot of features about this compressor. The The manual is over 30 pages, and if I sit here and went through every little detail and explained everything in very minute detail, uh, I try to summarize it best I can, but we would be here for a whole hour. <laughs> I, know, I think a lot of folks will probably fall asleep by then. So instead, just go ahead and check out the links below, download it. Now, I'm not affiliated with... Uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs or, T or Tokyo Dawn Records, but I think these are really great uh, products and stuff. And like I said, I use them, I enjoy them, and actually liked it enough. Even though I don't use all the features on the Gentleman's Edition, I went ahead and purchased it. Now the the Gentleman's Edition, which is the paid version, is forty euros, and I think that's just an outstanding price because there are a lot of compressors out on the market there, uh, VST plugins and stuff that cost five times more and are not really no better or not as good so yeah do check out the tdr hotel Ko nikov at its uh russian name uh it's based upon a gentleman read the manual uh as it explains more in detail about why it was named after him very good uh uh it's a vst plug-in my one of my favorites and i highly recommend it folks so definitely do check it out now, like I mentioned, I'm not affiliated with them, but I am affiliated with, uh, well, a shampoo. And if you like a shampoo backup pro, I highly recommend uh, use it. I use it. Do check out my links down in the description below because purchasing a shampoo, uh, backup pro does help support this channel. So anyway, that's it for this video. One, I hope you like it. Uh, hope he introduced you to something, uh, that you may not realize was out of the market that you may actually like and want to use. Like I said, I use it every day. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing is free and it's for you. Let you know I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.